to my milking cottage on the Demi Rosa. We're going to try some cottage cheese today. And so, I hope everybody's ready. It's a cool day in March. Mm. <laughs> I want it to be spring so bad, but it's not. So, we're gonna do an inside project today, and that is gonna be cottage cheese. So, here we go. Okay, so our cottage cheese calls for one gallon of milk. I've already poured in one half gallon into my, into my pot. I'm going to now pour in the other and we will have one gallon of fresh, raw, yummy Jersey milk. And for the rest of the recipe, we're going to need a quarter teaspoon of rennet and a two, two tablespoons of cool water to dissolve our rennet into and a quarter cup of buttermilk. And that will be, the buttermilk is going to be our culture. You pretty much need a culture. So that will be our culture and our rennet will make us beautiful little cheese. So now let's go ahead and take it to the stove. All right, we're at the stove. We've turned it on low heat and we've got our thermometer, the one that yells at me when it says it's the temperature is where it's supposed to be so that I don't forget and walk off and go, oh shoot, anyway. So it needs to be up to 95 degrees. So we have everything ready to go here. And we have our buttermilk and our, our rennet. This is my buttermilk, this is a quarter cup of that and then a quarter teaspoon of vegetable rennet. And you just do this into your cool water and then just let it dissolve. Okay, so our culture and our rennet is ready when the time comes. And that really won't be too much longer. Just a few things I'd like to tell you about your cottage cheese. It's gonna, it's a large curd cottage cheese. And what you I do is I, get it ready and then I put it in the refrigerator and then when I need or want some cottage cheese, I'll get the cottage cheese out and then I'll pour heavy cream on top of it. I have in the past put the heavy cream on the curds and put them in the refrigerator and it just pretty much turns into this large creamy curd. So I prefer curds. <laughs> so, and then sometimes what I, I have done is put in uh, cherry tomatoes, cut up cherry tomatoes, green onion, olives, a little garlic salt, ooh, even a, a little dill, whatever. Make it your own, and then it's just a wonderful, refreshing cottage cheese. Or if you just want to eat the curds out of the, the bowl, I've done that many, many times. So, so just some tips on cottage cheese. And we are at 95 degrees. So, we will just take our thermometer out and start with our curds. First, we're going to stir in, oh, let's turn off the heat. Then we're gonna stir in our rennet. We're just kind of pour it over the top. Then we're gonna stir it for about 30 seconds that to make sure that it gets in through all of the milk. Want it to get all the way in there. So I'll sh quick show you. Milking cans for tonight's milking. Cream for butter and our sourdough starter. Our uh, sourdough starter has just been wonderful. Make biscuits and bread and pancakes, yummy. Tip, don't use the cloth that you put over your bread, or if it touches your bread at all, don't use that while making cheese, because if you do, it will make your cheese spongy and because of the yeast. Just a little thing I learned, so don't do that. Now we're gonna add our culture, our buttermilk culture, and we're going to 
get that very well distributed into our milk as well. And that, I just love the cultures. I, I use a lot of sour cream and buttermilk in my cultures for my cheese because it's cheaper, easier to get. And once I make my sour cream and buttermilk, then I have made my own cultures and I'm ready for all kinds of cheeses. So that has always been something I prefer. Although I do buy the other cultures for the hard, hard cheeses because that's just what you have to do. So we'll put a lid on, take this off the heat, set, set our timer for 30 minutes and let let the rennet and the buttermilk do its magic. Then we'll come back and I will see if we have a clean break, which means that your curds are formed and they're they're pretty firm. Um, and then we'll just go from there. So it's been 30 minutes. And so we're gonna take the lid off and we're going to check for a clean break. And how you, and what that means basically is that our curds are forming and we need to, now we're gonna check it to see if they're formed enough to cut so that we can get a, a good, good firm curd. So what you do is you put your finger in at 45 degrees and you pull it up and if it, cuts pretty cleanly and you get some whey, then that means it's ready to go. So we're going to cut it with our curd knife. We're gonna to try to make it into one inch cubes. So when you do this, it gives the curds more space to more of an area so that they can release the whey and that you can get a good drainage of the way. So we'll do this, then we'll go across here. On both sides. Now, we're going to put our thermometer back in and set it for 110 degrees. And we're going to start to stir and cook the curds. Okay, now we're going to stir the curds. Turn the heat back on and stir the curds so that we can get them ready to release their whey and the milk solids so it will firm up our curds. So I'll just stay here and just keep stirring for a while. And I'll come back when, you can see how, how big the curds are. They're, they're large and they're very shaky and they have a lot of, uh, a lot of whey yet to go, left to drain. So I'll see you back in just a few. As you're stirring your curds, you want to stir them every five minutes until you reach 110 degrees. Then you'll have a nice squeaky curd. So every five minutes until you reach 110. Well, the curds are just pretty properly cooked. So you can see that they're not flimsy like they were. Pretty firm. Mm, almost got all of the way out. So I'm gonna let it cook just a little bit longer and then we'll, we'll wash it. Well, we reached 110, so we're going to stop our thermometer and we're gonna take our curds over to the sink and give them a wash. Okay, now we're going to put our curds in our cheesecloth and let them drain for five minutes and then we will start the washing process, which is really very easy. Oh, 
I'm not going to keep this way today because I have so much other produce or dairy to, to deal with. So this was just going to have them go into the universe. Then we're going to lop our cheese right into our cheesecloth. I'm going to get out every little bit. Of course, this cheesecloth has not touched bread, so it is not yeasty at all. So we'll give that five minutes and be back. Well, it's been five minutes, so we're gonna get the corners of our cheesecloth together. And we're going to drain, squeeze our cheesecloth, get some of the way out. As much of the milk solids and whey as we can because we want a real firm curd, especially if you're gonna put it in cream because it will absorb all the cream unless it's gotten a real firm skin on. So we just keep doing this, keep the squeezing. Then we're gonna put water on it, <laughs> which makes no sense, but we do. We wash it in. Make sure we have nice cold water and we wash it. And this also helps stop the cooking process. Rinse is the way away, the way away as well. So now we're gonna open it up. Kind of break it apart in the middle. Make sure that we get all of the, the way out from all of the cheese. So we're gonna open it like that. Put some water in there. And we're going to close it up again and do some more squeezing. that water out. Well, that way out. It's cooler to the touch. Very good. Excellent. have as much whey as you can get out. Then we're going to put it into our our bowl. Break it apart. Break it apart. Look at that good old curd. This is why it's really the large curd this as large as you want. And then to add a little flavor, we're gonna put about a teaspoon of salt in. Of course you do this with very clean hands. And some of the things that you, I didn't probably say and I should have, is when you're making cheese, you always want to make sure that your stuff, your equipment is very clean and sterile so you don't get any bacteria into your, any more than your culture. So make sure everything is very clean. And you will have a wonderful cheese product. So there we have, look at that. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, large curd cottage cheese. Look, mm -mm. Mm, it's squeaky. On your TV, mm, gonna be very good. So that's it for the cottage cheese. Thank you so much for watching. 
subscribe and like, please, and share. This helps. And I hope you give this a try because it's, it's a wonderful thing. And I hope you can find a farmer in your area who has raw milk. If not, Jersey cow is the way to go. Y'all have a blessed day. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless.